Hello and welcome back to the course on deep learning. Today we've got a very exciting tutorial ahead. We're talking about long short term memory or LSTMs for short. So let's get started. It's actually gonna be quite a saturated tutorial. So we've got our own little plan of attack for today. Today we've got to first of all look at a bit of history. So where it came from, what was the main idea behind it, why people invented it. Um, then we're going to be talking about LS, the LSTM architecture. That's going to be the bulk of our tutorial today, so be prepared for that. And then we're going to have an example walkthrough. Hopefully we'll have enough time for that as well. All right, so let's get started. Here we've got a problem which we identified in the previous tutorials. We talked about the vanishing gradient problem. So in short, what happens is as we propagate the error through the network, it has to go through the unraveled temporal loop. And as it does that, it goes through these layers of neurons which are connected to themselves, these hidden layers which are connected to themselves, and they're connected by the means of a, a weight called the WREC or w, w recurrent weight. And because this weight is applied many, many times on top of itself, that causes the gradient to decline rapidly, meaning that the weights of the layers on the very far left are updated much slower than the weights on the of the layers on the far right. And this creates a domino effect because the weights of the far left layers are very important because they dictate the outputs of those layers, which are the inputs to the far right layers, and therefore the whole training of the network suffers. And that is called the problem of the vanishing gradient. And as a rule of thumb, we could see here that if uh, WREC is small, then we have vanishing gradient. If WREC is large, then we have exploding gradient. So now, how do you solve this problem? We've talked. We talked about a couple of possible solutions. We talked about um, clipping the gradient or penalizing the gradient for exploding gradients. We talked about uh, smartly uh, selecting the weights or the echo state networks, which we didn't go into detail on uh, for the vanishing gradient. And also we talked about the LSTMs for the vanishing gradient. Just if you separate yourself from all of this information on all this theory and knowledge, uh, how would you solve a problem like this? What, what's the easiest and fastest solution to this? So if we have WREC is, uh, in simple terms, less than one, then we have vanishing gradient. If we have WREC greater than one, we've got exploding gradient. What's uh, the f first thing that comes to mind to solve this problem? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is to make WREC equal one. Um, and that's exactly what was done in the LSTMs. This is a very, very simplified explanation, and we, there's definitely more to it than just WREC equals one. But in general, that's the idea, um, and that's all it took. And when I saw this for the first time, I was so uh, excited that you know the solution is so simple. It's really a genius solution, and that completely gets rid of um, you know, the vanishing gradient problem. And um, so... Uh, who are the people behind this? Here are two uh, gentlemen. We've already talked about uh, Sepp Hochreiter. Uh, and the second person is uh, Jürgen Schmidhuber, who is uh, who was his supervisor during uh, Sepp's um, research or PhD. And um, yeah, so basically uh, they wrote a paper on in 1997 about LSTMs. And that's when LSTMs were introduced to the world for the first time. Very exciting topic. So let's uh, have a look at what they actually are. So we've got a recurrent neural network right here, unraveled a temporal loop. This is what it looks like if you dig in uh, inside the recurrent neural network. And right here, I wanted to do a quick shout out to uh, Christopher Ola. So here is his blog right here. Um, very well written blog, amazing images as you can see, and we're gonna be using the images from this blog in our explanation here. So thank you very much to uh, Christopher for making this publicly available and uh, allowing the use of his images in other uh, works. So uh, we'll definitely reference this at the end of today's tutorial. And uh, going back to our presentation, so here we've got the uh, recurrent neural network. And this is what it looks like inside. And this is where the problem lies. So this uh, operation that happens here is actually a, a neural network layer operation, as we'll see further down. But simply put, uh, as you have outputs coming into your module, into this module, 
uh, this operation is applied and then goes into the next module operations applied and so on. So as you apply this operation, when you back propagate, it goes through all of this and that's where the weights are applied. That's where the W rec is sitting. As that weight is applied, as it's applied, is applied, the gradient vanishes, vanishes and vanishes. And that means that the weights cannot be updated properly or uh, fast enough to train the network properly. And so the further away you try to look, the more uh, problems you have and the more of the vanishing gradient you have. Uh, this is the standard RNN, and this is what the LSTM version looks like. And I know you might be thinking that, whoa, this is super complex. Uh, this There's so much going on here. And indeed, it is a bit more complex than the standard RNN. But check this out. This is how LSTMs are normally displayed in literature and in um, uh, papers and so on. So Definitely, this is the same thing as you saw by, before, previous, uh, before, um, but it's just a much uh, more convoluted explanation or representation. So definitely, this option is better, and we're going to stick with this one. And uh, more so, the the it looks it looks difficult now, but the goal is that by the end of this tutorial, you are completely comfortable with what's going on here, and I think that's pretty exciting. That this, even though this might may seem a bit complex now. Uh, towards the end of the tour, hopefully you'll be able to navigate LSTMs quite well. And uh, so before we go deep into what's going on here, the, I wanted to highlight the main point. So remember we said WREC equals one? Well, that's this line over here, that pipeline at the top. As you can see, there's nothing much, not much going on here. There's only like two pointwise operations, as we all understand further down. And there's no complex... Um, neural network layered operations. They're all brought out to this part. And that's this is the essence. If you're going to take away one thing from today's tutorial, that then this is that. That you LSTMs have a memory cell, it's called the memory cell, it's I, I call it a memory pipeline, um, which just goes through time, and this is us going through time, and it can very freely th flow through time. Sometimes it might be uh, removed and erased. Sometimes things might be added into it, but that's pretty much it. Otherwise, it flows through times freely, and therefore, when you back propagate through these LSTMs, you don't have that problem of uh, your vanishing gradient. That's that's uh, the essence of uh, LSTMs. All right, so now let's dig in in a bit more detail. So we're going to replace these uh, modules on the left and the right with uh, something more simple. Just gonna replace them with um, our rep these representations. So C stands for uh, memory, um, <laughs> memory cell, I guess. Uh, H is your output. So there's you can see there's your output going out into the world, and here you got your output going into the next module, um, into the next block, and then here you've got your input XT. So basically, this is the output from the previous module, which also went into the world, but also is coming here. So there we go. So an LSTM uh, module takes in uh, three inputs and has two outputs. So CT and HT because these are the same. And uh, an important thing to understand and remember is that everything here is a vector. So all of these are, this is not just one neuron, not just one value. There are lots and lots and lots of values here behind, hiding behind this word, this letter XT. And here as well, and here as well, and everywhere, these are all um, layers. So just remember that, and we're going to reference them as vectors because that's pretty much the same thing, just lots of different values in one vector. Um, remember that, and that will make... Um, it will allow you not to go down the wrong path in the intuitive understanding of this. Just remember that these are all vectors. And uh, let's go through the legend. So we've got vector transfers. So any line here is uh, a vector being transferred or uh, kind of moving around in this in this net, in this uh, architecture. And uh, yeah, so that's just kind of to reiterate that it is a vector. Uh, then we've got a concatenation here. So here you can see that there's two lines combining into one. And important to understand that this is done here just to save space and make it less convoluted than it possibly could be. But the way, the best way to imagine it is you, that these two lines are running in parallel. That you're not actually combining, concatenation means that you're combining these two vectors on top of each other. But I think it's even easier to understand if you just think of it as in 
these there are two pipes running here, but they're running parallel to each other. So you've got one pipe, and then it goes here, and the second pipe goes here. Then these same pipes go here, and then they attach to that. So basically, you have two pipes running in parallel, feeding into these uh, neural network layer uh, layer operations. Then you've got copy. So where do we have copy? We have copy here. The memory is copied, goes straight ahead and just copied over here. Then this output is copied over here. Then you've got pointwise operations. Now we get to the interesting stuff. So you've got a couple of pointwise operations here. That's uh, five of them. And um, the first thing we're going to talk about these ones, the X's. The X's are valves and they all have names. This is the forget valve, the memory valve and the output valve. And in literature, you will see like letters F, uh, v and O uh, in, in the actual formulas representing these valves. And so a valve looks like this. <laughs> in uh, in um, plumbing, a valve looks like this, and we're going to kind of think of it that way as well. So you've got uh, water or uh, basically um, something flowing through, and then you can either close it or you can open it or you can close it to some extent. Same thing here. So you've got the forget valve is basically controlled by this... Um, uh, layer operation, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and based on the output of that, based on the decision made here, this valve is either closed or open. So if it's open, memory flows through uh, freely. If it's closed, then memory is cut off, and therefore uh, it's not doesn't it's not transferred further. And then new memory just uh, is will be added here probably, uh, based on the results here. Then you've got the memory valve, which again is controlled by a sigma. Sigma stands for the sigmoid uh, activation function. That means that that's the activation function used in these uh, layer operations. And as uh, the decision is made here, this value, which is um, another layer operation, which we'll get to in a second, is either added to the memory or is somewhat added to the memory or is not added to the memory, depending on the value that is decided in this valve. And then again, another valve controlled by a sigmoid. As you remember, sigmoid, uh, why we're using sigmoids because they're from zero to one. And therefore, zero stands for no memory. No, nothing goes through. One stands for something goes through. And then here you've got the uh, valve, which is the forget valve. Uh, same thing. Uh, not the forget valve. This is the output valve. And we'll get to that in a second. We're pretty much already going through the whole network already. Um, so, and then we've got the T-shaped uh, kind of like pipe uh, or T-shaped joint. And we'll, I'll show you where that is. That is over here. So where you have memory going through and then you can add additional memory. So if you, we go back, you've got memory flowing through this joint and maybe some additional memory will be added into it. Maybe not, depending on the valve. Um, and that's pretty much it. You've got the tangent operation here. That's, uh, that's more kind of like mathematical behind it, why you want it be between minus one and one. Uh, we won't get into details on that, but that's another pointwise operation here you have. And uh, you've got the neural network layer operations over here. That's that's their representation. So basically, just think of them as you've got a uh, you've got instead of pointwise, pointwise like element by element of a vector. You know, if you want to multiply a vector by zero, you multiply every element by zero or by one or by a certain amount. Kind of think of it in that way. That's a very simplistic um, way to think about these uh, pointwise operations. Whereas um, these ones are a bit more complex. You've got a layer coming in, and then you got a layer coming out, or, or like a layer because again. Everything here is a vector, so you've got a layer of these sigmoids coming out, controlling the valve for each one of these uh, elements in the vector of memory. So there's not just one sigmoid, there's many different, and that's why you've got a whole layer coming in, and then you've got a layer coming out. These are uh, layer operations. So just remember that. And uh, yeah, so we're ready to look into this in, in step by step. And it's gonna be pretty simple because we've discussed everything already. Um, in how in terms of how it works, so we've got a new value coming in. You've got uh, memory, uh, so you've got not memory. You've got a value coming from the previous node, and whoops, and together they uh, are combined to um, to decide whether this valve should go, should go ahead or should be closed or should be opened or somewhat closed or opened. Uh, then you've got. These two again combined together, or not co combined? Like they again, they flow in parallel, and then they're combined in in here or in this operation. Um, and and basically, it's not just them combined. It's like there's lots of layers here, lots of layers here, uh, one la like lots of neurons here, lots of neurons here, and then all of that is basically in one um, 
layer operation is used to decide what value we're going to pass through and then also if that value is going to pass through or not and to what extent. Um, then here we've got the memory flowing through, we've got the forget valve if it's closed or open, we've got memory valve closed or open and, and we're adding in some memory possibly if we want to update. So basically we can let this whole memory flow through, then keep this one closed, keep this one open, the memory won't change. Keep this one, or we can keep this one uh, closed and keep this one open, then we can update the memory completely. And here finally we've got these two values combined to decide what part of the memory uh, memory pipeline is going to be output is going to become output of this module is it going to you know, go to fully as the output or, or, or to some extent and so on so again these decide that so that's how it all works pretty uh, straightforward architecture let's have a look at a specific example uh, to understand this a bit better so the example we talked about, I'm a boy who likes to learn, isem kluktarirat uchit, in translation to Czech. If this were, were girl, then here would be isem holka ktera rada uchit, uh, meaning that these two words, not just this word would change, but also it would affect these two words. So different to in Czech rather than, than in English. So the, these words are affected by the gender of the subject. And therefore, in our LSTM, we might want to store the subject, boy in this case, in the memory. So, for instance, let's say boy is stored here, and then it's just flowing th uh, through freely, and uh, nothing is changing. Like, if we get, if, if uh, our new information doesn't tell us that there's a new subject, we just have boy flowing through freely and keeps flowing like that. If, for instance, we have a new subject, we have girl, or we have, um, we have a name like Amanda, or, or something else, and we understand that we've got a new subject, then we'll store, we'll let this valve... Um, we'll close this valve, we'll say, you know, destroy the memory that we had, then open this valve, put in new memory, and then put the name here, put the subject. We won't just put in the gender, we won't just put in like female, uh, we'll actually put the whole, as much information as we can. For instance, this could be the architecture, it doesn't have to be like this, but as an example, we could put in, uh, for instance, girl now into this, um, into this uh, pipeline. And why would we do that? Well, because then from that, we can extract different elements of information. We can extract that it's female. We can extract that it's singular, right? So not just that it's, there's additional information, the word girl, that it's singular. We can extract more information. We can extract that the, the word girl, for instance, has four letters uh, or that it was capitalized or wasn't capitalized. J just as these are all very, um, very intuitive examples. It doesn't have to work this way, but this is how it could work. And so then we have the word girl in here. And so that's how this valve works and this valve works. And so what this valve does is it extracts certain information from what you have in the memory. So for instance, if we have now girl in here and for the purposes of the current, of the next word or next sentence that's coming up, you might need to know, like we saw, you need to know the gender. So then this valve uh, will facilitate the extraction of the gender and that will go as an input into your next module and it'll help the next module, like it'll be here, decide um, decide how to deal with the information that's coming its way, how to um, put it into the correct form for the female gender, for example. And so that's that's how the output valve works and what, uh, what it does. So there we go, that's how the long short term memory works and I hope this was a quite an intuitive explanation and uh, now you have a bit of a better understanding what it, what LSTMs are like. Uh, in terms of additional reading, you could definitely reference the original paper by our two offers who created LSTMs. Alternatively, if you don't want to get that deep into mathematics and into the technical stuff, there's a the great blog by Christopher Ola, which we've already mentioned, a great explanation of LSTMs uh, highly recommend to check it out. There's a bit of mathematics, not too heavy. And there's another blog by uh, Shi Yan, Understanding LSTM, LSTM and its diagrams. Diagrams are a bit more uh, in depth, so they're a bit more, uh, there's a bit more less space saving, but diagrams are a bit more in depth, might be easier to understand in some cases. No mathematics whatsoever, just plain intuition. So also um, highly recommend this blog to check it out if you would like to get. Uh, a bit of additional information on LSTMs.
Now make sure to check out these videos on the right or the full course in the description to continue your learning and I look forward to seeing you there.